Camille here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, we talk about how to close a deal on a piece of land. Somebody signs your offer, and they send it back. What the hell do you do now? Uh Uh-oh, what do I do now? (laughs) We can help. (laughs) We've all been there. Exactly. Before we get into it, though, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Jason asks, I have recently been scrubbing out anything that has a business name such as LLC, Inc., Corporation, etc. I was never getting any deals from these, so I thought I'd just exclude them from the start. Does anyone else leave them in or out? I'm curious what others have seen. Thanks. Jill? I know what we do. <laughs> we leave them in. But I don't send them 40. Like if the same person, you see the same um, LLC owns 40 deals, they don't need 40 letters. They'll figure it out. You know, you just, you can send them one. That's okay. And you don't even have to put all of them on there. You can just send them the one and they'll, and they'll get it. So, because all of our, our stuff's in LLCs. You never know who you might be missing because, and you know what, it's not even just us. There's a lot of um, trusts and uh, other uh, entities that people choose to take t- ownership in that doesn't mean that it's someone that wouldn't want to get your offer. So if you take those out, you could be missing some good deals. She's absolutely right. Um, you absolutely want to keep those in. Those are the professional people that are in the real estate True. business that own real estate, especially for uh, – infill lots those are the people who own lots that they're going to build on right they're the people who are going to buy this property from you when you buy it ding ding so that's right too once you close on the other one call them too by the way hang on to that data we buy property from churches Mm -hmm. and companies all the time Mm -hmm. what you do want to take out is the city of los angeles or the city of of whatever any municipal municipality bureau of land management any government agency uh hospitals and just stuff where you just know there's such a small chance that they're going to actually sell the property to you. Right, that it was like a mis- it's a mistake yeah. or something, you know. That's cool. Today's topic, how to close a deal on a piece of land. This is the meat of the show. And I'm also happy to report it's Jill's show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the whole thing about us and how we got, how this has been the core theme of how we run our business. It's always been... Steven, make my phone ring. And then once the phone rings, whether it's on the buy side or the sell side, that's my job is where I come in. So what does this mean? So now Steven did all his work. He picked the right county. He priced them perfectly. They went out. Now they are. They now want to sell. They signed it. They sent it back. What do I do and how do I close this deal? So I'm, a, I'm not going to talk about due diligence and what you need to do there. But I'm just going to talk about the actual deal. So I'm going to tell you, so the deal comes in, you've done your due diligence, it passes all your tests, you you checked everything, your pricing was spot on, you know, or you got it to where you needed it to be, and you're now ready to do it. What do I do? So you have two two ways to do this. You could either do a self-close, or you could do um, an escrow or attorney close, a traditional kind of close, like how we usually buy a house. So if you're doing a self-close, this would be, I'll tell you what that's for, and I'll tell you the kind of the steps, and then I'll tell you the other way. So a self-close is usually for a property that it's not very expensive. Maybe it's a couple thousand dollars. Let's just say it's $2,000. We usually tell people starting out under $5,000 or whatever your comfort level is, that's where you set that that uh, amount. Um, It also is one that you are very easy to find all the information. You, there's no uh, weird things with the title. Everybody's alive and able to sign. You went back and your due diligence, you know, if you're a member of ours, you have Title Pro 24 seven. So let's just say you went into Title Pro and you looked back and saw, wow, they owned it for 20 years. And then right before that, his dad owned it for 10. Okay, passes all my tests. You know, you've checked your um, everything. So there's nothing nothing that's, that's that tells you there's anything to, you know, be concerned about. So it's very easy to do this. So what you're actually doing is basically completing the transaction yourself. It's like buying a car, not needing to use uh, um, a salesman. A we dealer. all know we can, our dealer, right? We all know I can buy my own car. 
um, off Craigslist. I don't have to go to a dealer and I don't have to go stand at the DMV to do this with the guy. I can do it and I can walk in and then just get it done, you know, get it recorded kind of thing. So it's the same with property. I can do it myself. Literally, I could actually do this with my house. So this dollar amount that I'm setting, by the way, is my personal preference. You could literally sell me my your house, you know, or something. Like you could sell me something huge if I want to. We could write a purchase agreement on a cocktail napkin and do it. So I want you to know there's there's nothing um, um, not real about this. It's very it's um, it's legit. It's legit. So what do you do? Is basically now you got to recreate the thing. You got so like like you have a car, you have a pink slip. Well, for the property, you have a deed. So what you're going to have to do is, and, and normally you're buying it. I'm, I'm say in Arizona, traditionally how it goes. And my seller, what's this? I'll give you a real example. Let's say I'm in Arizona. The property I'm buying is in California. And my seller lives in Illinois. Very, very common. So what am I doing? I'm going to recreate the deed. I'm going to uh, s- set up an, a notary in Illinois. I'm going to close a deal for me and issue the payment and get it back to me. So am I going to too much detail or that you no. want to keep going? Okay. No, this is great. Am I talking too much? Heck no. <laughs> okay. So This is important. Okay. I'm getting kind of detailed here, so I want to make sure that I'm it's where you want me to go. So what I'm going to do is basically we use Deed Perfect. It's a company that we made that spits out a deed. So I'm going to make arrangements with the seller and say, all right, Mr. Seller, thank you very much. We're going to buy your property. We all agreed on $2,000. Um, I'm going to send you a cashier's check on uh, what day is good for you. Tuesday. Great. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to arrange a notary to come to your house. Make sure your wife's there because you're both on the deed. And what you do? Two and four o'clock. Great. I'll set it all up. Um, make sure you both are there and all, they will present the deed. And at that same time, they will hand you a cashier's check for the $2,000. Yay. And that's what you're doing. Now I'm going to hang up the phone. This is on Thursday. I'm calling the notary, making all the arrangements with the notary. Um, usually I pay about $50, $50, $75 for a service like this. And you can go to like Notary123, I think it's a company that I've used in the past. There's a bunch out there now that you can find online. And you're just calling a, a notary in the area of the seller and saying, Hi, I need you to sign. I've got two sellers, husband and wife. I'm going to overnight you a one-page warranty deed. And a cashier's check. I'm going to have an envelope with payment in there for you to give to them. And here's their address. Here's their contact information. Fantastic. And basically, you're just setting up the closing form. And you're going to overnight the documents to the notary. The notary's going to go to their house, meet them, get the signing of the deed, and hand them the check. And now the seller's all done. And then they're going to put that in an envelope and send it back to you. And then what do I do? Well, I just send it in to get recorded. That is basically the gist of a self close. No title insurance was needed to, by the way. That's they're not involved in this part. Because it's that low of a property. I feel that good of a, about it. It's real vacant land. Um, no one's gonna build on it right away. It's not needed. So do you want me to add anything before we go to the next one? No, I think you covered it all. More and more and more. Mm-hmm. There's a lot less of this happening in our group. That's true. This they're is, doing bigger deals. Yeah. Yeah. Jill will talk about now the importance of a title escrow attorney close. Right. You can't build on a you can't lend against a piece of property that doesn't have title insurance on it or, or unless it's very unconventional. So right. it's very popular with rural vacant land. You buy a 40 acre property for 10,000 bucks, sell it for 20. Everybody just, you know. Because they just want to hunt on it. Yeah. Maybe or use it for motorcycles. Maybe they build a shack themselves, you know. Something. Uh, yeah. Or they just want to own it or whatever. Park their RV on it now and then. So yeah. it, it's yeah. it how you close on a property depends on how it's going to be used afterward. Right. So if you intend to sell a property to a builder who's going to build a house on it and probably lend against it, and certainly the person who buys it's going to get a mortgage on it, you need to do it the, uh, the way that Jill's going to describe now. Right. And you don't have to know going into it too, by the way. Can you get title insurance after the fact? Yes, you can get it later on. Yeah. You don't have to do it. At That's that right. time. So don't think you're making a mistake. Yeah, you can always go back. If you don't get it right then and you decide, oh, shucks, I need title insurance because this guy wants to do something with it. That can be added later on. You can do it. So perfect. You could actually just do it when you go to sell it at that point. Do the title insurance. There's some risk associated with that because it just depends on who you close it through. But right. go ahead. Okay. Want me to go to the next, yeah. the other way? Yeah. Okay. So now the other way, okay, so you send out the mail, passes your due diligence, comes back, 
you're all excited, ready to do this. We're talking $20,000. I'm not going to do a self-close for $20,000. I don't feel that good about it. Heck, that's a lot of money. I have some lot to lose. And I just want to make sure it's done right. You know, and or, um, you know, the wife passed on. We got a trust. There's a thing going on over here. I, you're like, ugh, I'm not going to do a self-close on this yeah. one too. I need to get it done right. So there's two ways to do it. So well, it it's all falls into, it's like an attorney slash escrow and it's you don't they don't go together it's one or the other so let me throw this out to you my first choice like i'm doing land academy deal funding now and so what i when my new process is on these larger deals first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to see if i can find it's really easy to go online to uh google real estate investor attorney and that's what these guys do. They don't do divorces too and custody cases or whatever like that. They just do real estate investor transactions. You want to call them first, find one in the state that the property is in and uh, or it actually doesn't have to be that, but for that state. So, cause some attorneys will do others, but anyway, um, you basically, they can do the transaction for you. They can complete the whole thing with or without title. And it's so nice and I feel so comfortable going with an attorney. And guess what? This is all they do, by the way. They are faster and often less expensive. You can find the right guy. So I know people that have got it down to between $750 and $1,000, believe it or not, going through an attorney with this kind of transaction. And they're doing all the work for you, by the way. They're doing the notary. They're right. taking care they're of all that. they're doing it correctly. Yeah, they're doing it the right way. They, they're doing the deed for you. You don't have to think about it. And check this out. This is the best part. Some of them are even so fast and so dialed in to doing this that they can do them in 24 hours if you don't need title. And they can do them in 72 hours if you do need title. I mean, I, even if it's twice that, I'm thrilled. That's, I mean, so, a regular deal takes, for us girl, it usually takes 30 to 45 days. Exactly. It can take a lot longer. So that's my first way now when it comes through. If I'm not able to find an attorney in the area that can do that, then my then my next backup plan or my just my backup plan is a traditional uh, escrow agent and you will go through an escrow and it's just like like you would um, you know you're buying your house or selling your house going through escrow when you call call around uh, and negotiate check the rates because they're different rates you'd be surprised what they charge um, it's all over the place for the same thing. You're going to go, what the heck? You know, why would I choose this one? Why would I choose this one? So, and if you're like us, you know, you're an investor. Ask for investor rates. Um, you're reselling. So I want you to ask for uh, like a hold open uh, policy because what that means is they're going to open title and do everything for you on the buy side, but you know you're just going to turn around and sell it. You're not living on it. This is not your thing. You're going to turn around and sell it. So it's kind of like it stays in limbo, if, if you will. Um, and then it's cheaper and faster when you go to sell it uh, to close escrow on the sell side. They already ordered the, ordered the title work, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. So one escrow no number literally closes. You mm -hmm. own the property. They reopen another escrow but they all they put all the files in there mm -hmm. and all the work and the research it's and stuff done. is done and just file refile a deed and exactly. assign the title policy exactly uh, it, it takes literally hours instead of a month exactly and it's just less expensive you'll pay i traditionally pay a couple hundred dollars more on the front end but it saves like a thousand on the back end is really really how it goes and then they do the work for you now the hardest part of this is Dealing with an escrow agent because we all know time kills deals. That's for sure. Whether you're buying or you're selling, I have backed out of deals and said they goofed up. Time killed the deal here. I'm I moved on. I don't want it now. I just I have a better better deal over here. I'm just, I'm walking, you know. And that could happen. So that's the hardest part about an escrow close. They're doing all the work. Um, they're, you know, the notary and the title work and the getting the signing and the deed and the closing and, and, uh, but, uh, it takes, it takes longer and it's, it's just have to kind of, and it shouldn't, which is interesting because all of the deals that we're doing are all cash. Even though we all tell them, they still, they still just, I just think they just have their way of doing things, you know, but because there's no, um, inspection needed. There's not a mortgage. We, there's half half the documents. Like when you buy the house, it's like 
six pieces of paper versus 60 pieces of paper for what we're doing, but still, you know, it's, it's, you have to kind of get them going. But once you have a good, um, escrow agent and you have that relationship, hang on to them, you know, use them, run all your deals for them. Um, and some will do in different States. doesn't have to be in that state. Do you want to add some more? Yeah. So with escrow agents, um, nobody ever talks about this with escrow agents. They're very emotional. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of reasons, and they're very overworked and underpaid. It's true. Lawyers are not. Lawyers are, have no emotion at all. Uh, they could care less about this transaction. So consequently, <laughs> this is awesome. consequently, it gets done really fast. <gasps> he expects to get paid. He actually probably pays himself right out of out of the you know the HUD one closing statement. Yeah. And it's just another deal. It's true. More the better. So dealing with lawyers is, and this is 180 degrees from what we used to teach even three or four years ago. Yep. Dealing with lawyers that this is all they do right. is a really good idea. Yep. You do not want a family law lawyer or a trial attorney closing your real estate deal. Right. Then it'll take 60 days. Go on Google and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> go on Google and uh, there, there are lawyers that uh, this is all they do. They do a thousand deals a month. Exactly. And that's our, that's how we do them right now. Yeah. Exactly how we do them. That part hasn't changed. Great work, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> well, you did it again, and it's been another, I don't know, 20 minutes listening to the Land Academy show. Join us next time where Jill talks about, now you own it, how do you sell a piece of land on the internet? Cool. And we answer your questions posted on our online community, landinvestors.com. It's free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Good stuff. Good work. Thank you. That's Close a lot. these deals is is um, closing these deals. What I learned about closing deals is that I never want to close a deal anymore. Do and a self-close. So, and what we teach, no, right. no, no, no. Just have somebody else do it. Right. Um, it, in a perfect world, you know, we have gr- people, members now who are, who've been in our group for a year or two years. They don't do any of this stuff anymore. Right. They have a, an assistant or two assistants handling all the stuff for them. Right. Even in go, we're dealing with the transaction coordinators and or the attorneys or however it works. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but you need to know about it. Exactly. And you do need to close a bunch of deals yourself so you know what's involved. Exactly. It is good to do just to get, get your feet wet a little bit. Do a couple little ones. Even when you just – you could buy something cheap. You know what? This is a good thing we haven't talked about. Um, you know, you buy something cheap. It's your first property. Did it, you got it in your name now. Sell it to your wife. And then, yeah. you know, and then have, when it sells again, your wife deeds it to that guy. Just get a little, just a practice. little practice, you know, getting it recorded and what that's all about. And then you sell it and how to do with that. And yeah. That's really good. First one's the hardest, then it's easy. Exactly. Then you don't want to do it anymore at all. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you're watching or wherever you are listening, please rate us there. We Here's are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.